Welcome to Lesson 7D, More Dimensional Analysis Examples. In this lesson, we'll do some more examples of dimensional analysis using the method of repeating variables. We'll see how we can sometimes predict trends and even actual equations within an unknown constant. Knowing only the dimensions of the variables, we can do this without knowing any physics. That's pretty powerful. For our first example, we'll look at a soap bubble. Suppose we know that the difference in pressure delta P between the inside and the outside of a soap bubble is a function of surface tension and soap bubble radius r. We'll use dimensional analysis to find a relationship between these variables in dimensionless form. We'll use the method of repeating variables that we learned in the previous lesson. Step 1, list the variables. There are only 3, so n equal 3. Step 2, list the dimensions. In terms of primary dimensions, pressure is a force per area, which is ml over t squared, and then an l squared in the denominator, which gives us m over t squared l. Sigma s is a force per length. Its dimensions are m over t squared, with one less l in the denominator, compared to pressure. Radius is l, of course. Step 3 is to pick the reduction j. There are three primary dimensions in this problem, m, l, and t, so we pick j equal 3. The Buckingham Pi theorem tells us that k equal n minus j equal 3 minus 3 equals 0. So we expect 0 pi's. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So what does it mean? Well, either we have not listed enough variables, and delta p depends on something in addition to these two, or this j is too big. We'll assume the latter and reduce j by 1. This is an example of what I mentioned last time, that picking j as the number of primary dimensions in the problem doesn't always work. So we'll set j equal 2, and k becomes 3 minus 2, or 1. We expect only 1 pi. Step 4 is to pick the repeating variables. We pick j of them, where j is 2. Which 2 should we pick? Well, remember our rules, we can't pick delta p because it's the dependent variable. So we're left with these two. So we really have no choice. We pick surface tension and radius. Step 5 is to calculate the pi's. There's only one. We form it by picking our dependent variable delta p times the repeating variables raised to some exponents which we have to calculate. The dimensions of pi 1 are unity, or dimensionless, and we know the dimensions of each variable from step 2. We plug these in, delta p, sigma s raised to the a, and r raised to the b. Now we force this pi to be non-dimensional. Let's start with mass. On the left-hand side we have m to the 0, equal m to the 1, m to the a, equal m to the 1 plus a. We equate the exponents, and we get a equal negative 1. We repeat for l. We get l to the negative 1 plus b. Again, equating exponents, we get b equal 1. Plugging in these values of a and b, we have our non-dimensional pi, or pi 1 equal delta p times r over sigma s. This is our only pi, so we move on to step 6, namely write the functional relationship. Pi 1 is a function of the other pi's, but here we have only one pi. So what do we do? Well, what this is basically saying is that pi 1 is a function of nothing. If something is a function of nothing, that means it doesn't change. So pi 1 is a constant. Plugging in our pi from up here, we have delta p times r over sigma s is a constant. Now we answer the question, how does delta p vary with r and sigma s? The answer is delta p is a constant times sigma s over r. Thus we can predict trends by dimensional analysis. For example, if radius goes up by a factor of 2, then delta p goes down by a factor of 2. That's true regardless of the constant. Likewise, if surface tension goes up by a factor of 2, delta p goes up by a factor of 2. Let's examine the equation we have. I mentioned that sometimes dimensional analysis can actually give us an equation. We derived this equation without using any physics. The only thing we knew at the beginning were the dimensions of these variables. Yet we have an equation as a result. Note that this equation is to within some unknown constant. There's no way we can get this constant from dimensional analysis. But still, it's pretty amazing that we can get this result without knowing any physics at all. I'll write this out formally. We cannot predict the constant with dimensional analysis. So this is as far as we can get. Let's compare to a previous lesson where we talked about soap bubbles and surface tension. We had delta p of the bubble is 4 sigma s over r. Comparing these two, we see that the constant is 4. But again, there's no way we would know that from dimensional analysis alone. To get the constant, either some physics like we did in the previous lesson to get this equation, or one experiment 
if we could measure delta P, sigma S, and R, we could calculate this constant from our experimental measurements. If you did your experiment carefully, you'd get the constant to be around 4. Let's do another example. Namely, let's look at shaft power. Suppose all we know is that the output power, W dot, of a spinning shaft is a function of torque T and angular velocity omega. Let's use dimensional analysis to express some relationship between these variables in dimensionless form. We go through the same steps. I'll go through it a little more quickly this time. We list the variables and see that n equals 3. We list the dimensions. We showed in a previous lesson that W dot has dimensions of ML squared over T cubed. Torque is force times length, or moment arm, which is a length. The primary dimensions become ML squared over T squared. The units of omega are radians per second. Since radians is non-dimensional, primary dimensions are 1 over time. Now we pick the reduction. Since we have m, l, and t, three primary dimensions in the problem, we try j equal 3. But we have the same problem as the previous example. Namely, this gives us 0 pi's. So we lower j by 1 and try again. When j equal 2, k equal 1, we expect 1 pi. Step 4, pick the repeating variables. We really only have one choice, like in the previous example, since w dot is the dependent parameter. So we pick t and omega, the only two independent variables. Now we calculate the pi's. We set pi 1 equal w dot t to the a, omega to the b. Again, we force it to be dimensionless, like we've done a few times already. These are the primary dimensions of w dot, those of t raised to exponent a, and those of omega raised to exponent b. For mass m, we have exponents 1 and a. So 1 plus a has to equal 0, or a equal negative 1. For l, we have 2 and 2a. So 2 plus 2a equals 0, and a equal negative 1. Fortunately, these two match. It would be a red flag if they didn't. And either you did the algebra wrong, or you have something wrong with your dimensions, or you need another variable or something. If these did not agree, our mathematician friends would say that this is not a well-posed problem. Finally, for t, negative 3 minus 2a minus b all has to equal 0. Hopefully by now you can do these in your head as we did here without writing it all out. b is negative 3 minus 2a, or negative 1. So our pi 1 is w dot over t times omega. We have the same situation as last time, namely, pi 1 is a function of nothing, therefore pi 1 must be a constant. Our final result is thus w dot is a constant times omega t. From physics, we know that w dot is omega t. In other words, the constant is 1 in this case. So again, we were able to come up with an equation within an unknown constant just from dimensional analysis without knowing any physics at all. All we knew at the beginning were the dimensions of these variables. This is another example of where we can predict trends. For example, if you double omega, you double the shaft power. If you reduce the torque by half, your power goes down by half as well. I comment again that we derived this equation without knowing any physics, which is pretty powerful. I remind you that we cannot determine the constant from dimensional analysis. Our result from dimensional analysis is this equation with an unknown constant. But again, either some physics or one simple experiment will get you the constant. For my third example, let's have a little bit of fun. Suppose Albert Einstein is having trouble coming up with his famous equation of special relativity. The only thing he knows is that energy is a function of mass and speed of light, but he can't figure out the relationship. Let's help him. I made a short video about this where Professor Skeptic helps Albert generate the famous equation. I'll show some clips from that here. Hello, Albert. How are you doing? Hello. I am well. But I am stuck on this problem. I think that the energy is a function of the mass and the speed of light, but I cannot come up with the, the equation. Dimensional analysis can help. Let me share my screen. First we list the parameters. There are three of them. Then we list the primary dimensions of each parameter. In the MLT system, the dimensions of energy, mass, and speed of light are shown. Since there are three primary dimensions, ML and T, we set the reduction as j equal 3. So we expect k, the number of pi's, is n minus j, or 3 minus 3, which is 0. That makes no sense. We cannot have zero pi's. True. For cases like this, we reduce j by 1. When j equal 2, we get k equal 1. Thus, we expect one non-dimensional parameter, or pi. Since j is equal 2, we pick two repeating parameters. I chose the two independent ones, m and c. We generate the first pi by dimensional reasoning. We set pi 1 to the dependent variable e, times the two independent variables to some unknown exponents. 
the pi itself has to be non-dimensional. And these are the primary dimensions of E, m to its exponent, and c to its exponent. The algebra is trivial to solve for these exponents. t to the 0 equal t to the negative 2 times t to the negative 1, b1. We see that here. And it's easy to solve for the exponent b1. b1 is negative 2. We do the same for mass. 0 equal 1 plus a1. a1 has to equal negative 1. Finally, for l, we find b1 is negative 2. Fortunately, these two agree, or we'd be in trouble. Our first and only pi is thus pi 1 is e over mc squared. But since there's only one pi, it can't be a function of anything else, so it must be a constant. Solving for e is some constant times mc squared. Dimensional analysis cannot determine the constant, so our final result is e equal constant times mc squared. Well, I think I can prove that the constant must be 1. Well, then here's your final result. E equals mc squared. Well, that was relatively simple. Hmm, relatively. We shall call it the equation of special relativity. Thank you, Professor Skeptic. You're welcome. Goodbye. Have a nice day, Albert. Here's a link to that video. Quick summary is that we generated E equal constant times mc squared using dimensional analysis and the method of repeating variables. We can't get the constant from dimensional analysis, but you can do an experiment or some physics and find out that that constant is 1. Again, the amazing thing is that we generated this result using only dimensional analysis without knowing any physics. Any of you could have generated this in a few minutes just by dimensional analysis. You don't need to be a genius like Albert. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.